Hey, what's up cats and kittens and shout out to all my cerebralites. It is she, the Cerebral Diva, and I am back with another episode of Reality, and that's T-E-A because I give it to you scalding hot. So grab your cups, grab your sauces, gather around, and let's all partake in this libation of love and hip-hop Atlanta tea. Alright, so here we are, season 7, episode 6, entitled I'm Telling. Um, in this latest episode, we saw the reappearance or the reemergence of one of my favorites, Mama D. Shout out to Mama D. Uh, Mama D is just a mess on a whole other level. You know, if anyone was to have their own spinoff show or if anyone was to, to parlay this love and hip hop um, appearance into something more, my hope and prayer has always been that it would be Mama D. I could watch Mama D for probably just 24 hours straight. Um, anyhow, Mama D is having a granny makeover. She's decided that she wants to do some self improvements. And shout out to any woman who's, um, you know, trying to to, to to beautify and make herself feel better from the inside out, from the outside in. Doesn't really matter to me. Whatever makes you feel better, I say go for it. However, I do think that there's levels and that there's a hierarchy in terms of self improvements, right? And here's why I'm saying that. So a few years back, I remember watching Mama D. This is back when she had, um, was it I Deserve? I think that was the song that she had out. Or is that Tank? Um, I, I don't remember. But anyway, so Mama D had a song and she was performing the song live. And during this, this live performance, her teeth fell out. So when I'm seeing Mama D at Dr. Curves, and maybe there's some something that happened in between in this interim space in between the time the teeth fell out and the time that she decided to do some body modifications um but per, for me personally i think work on your grill get your grill right and everything else will fall in line thereafter subsequent to that so i just hope that mama d has a presence of mind to not go get all these body and hips but still have a grill that's falling out of her mouth that's not sexy anyhow moving on from mama d so Karen King also, there was a reemergence. So the, the, the Grand Dames were back during this episode. So we saw Mama D and we saw Karen King, who we haven't seen. Um, and Karen was really good. She looked really pretty. Um, but I did not know she was dating a guy who was 28 years old. How come no one told me this tea? Anyhow, with that being said, rule number one, right? I, I'm, I'm all down for a cougar, you know. However, I think even being a cougar has its limits. Like, the guy you're dating cannot be younger than your youngest child. And I'm not sure how old Karen's youngest child is, but I know that this guy has to at least be the same age as Scrappy or maybe younger. So that makes for a very uncomfortable um, situation. Like, how can Scrappy bring his friends around his mom if, she, if he knows that she has the potential to date one of them? I mean, how can Scrappy have a stepdad who's younger than him? It just creates a whole laundry list of problems, of, of I don't know, social anomalies that would make me feel completely uncomfortable. Anyhow, in addition to that, okay, so Keely's back on the scene. Now, I don't know if it's just me, but there's just something about this Keely girl that rubs me completely the wrong way. Her energy, her desperation is like she's doing everything she possibly can to make her mark, to get her camera time, and to prove that she's the HBIC. But she really just doesn't have that swag, if you ask me personally. So it's like there's an air desperation that she's trying to insert herself and make herself seem more relevant than she actually is. So we see a continuation of Erica Mena and this girl with this Home Depot orange hair that's um, rocking with Stevie, Day, Stevie J on Danger Zone Records. So she and Erica Mena are going back and forth about, you know, basically, it, it's so funny to hear them argue, right? Because, all right, so if I'm to give a nod in the direction of the person with the most talent, it would be the girl with the orange hair. Haven't, mind, haven't bothered committing her name to memory because she's really not that important to me yet. Um... But Erica Mena is not a singer. <laughs> Erica Mena is not a performer. You know, however, in this day and age, when you look at what happened to Cardi B, you don't really have to be the best singer, the best MC, whatever. If you have a look, the production, and the momentum, that's enough trajectory to take your career into the stratosphere in this day and age. So maybe Erica Mena, who's clearly a beautiful woman, has the potential to do something more than she's done so far. So they're both arguing back and forth, and I'm thinking to myself, this is the most ridiculous thing I've seen because they're both like Z-list talents. Neither one of them really have a leg to stand on as it relates to um, their merit as artists. So it's just funny to watch them go back and forth. And then we see Erica outside, 
and she's arguing back and forth with production and telling you know, you know the you know typical love and hip hop dysfunction. So moving on from that, um, Estelita apparently has not learned her lesson as it relates to Stevie J. Um, the pain must be really good. And say what you want to say about Stevie J. Stevie J. Let me tell you. Okay, before we talk about Stevie J, I just have to say. Even though he's a low-down, dirty dog, I wouldn't trust him as far as I can throw him. Shooter is so sexy to me. Do not judge me. <laughs> but Shooter is so sexy. I try not to be attracted to him, but it's just something about his eyes, the way he talks, sort of this um, alpha male disposition that he has, where I know he'd be absolutely no good in a relationship, but it's just like... I don't know, he's just such a tasty morsel. It's just hard not to be magnetized to that. So moving away from the shooter, because we'll come back to the shooter, I want to talk back about Stevie J really quick. So Stevie J, being the pimp that he is, and say what you want, Stevie J is a pimp, because, you know, these girls, they fall in line for Stevie J. Not only do they fall in line, they fall in love. And Stevie J doesn't love them hoes. Like, he does not care at all and he goes in and he smooth talks and you know he lowers he dims his eyes and you know starts licking his lips and you know sort of cupping his hands together and twisting them in the way that a pimp does when he's trying to lure you into his 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 realm of prostitution what have you but stevie just has a very very pimp-esque swagger about himself and so he's basically we're watching him we're watching a pimp at work as he induces estelita back into his 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 state of hip he hypnotizes her back into his fold so to speak so here she is she's back she's back in love and you know he's put her on a penthouse shoot and and she's thinking to herself somehow this is what's going to elevate her first of all who reads magazines these days um is penthouse even relevant in a day and age where most people get their porn online in 2018 and most people certainly aren't paying for pornography? Um, so I'm not sure how or why she has the propensity to believe that this penthouse shoot is somehow going. It's, it's like he he completely gassed her up. So Estelie is back in love. And at this point, this is one of those women when I say I don't feel any sympathy for her moving forward because everything is out there you know everything about this dude at this point it's no longer him abusing you it's making you is you making the choice to be abused because you you keep walking back in for whatever reason if you like it if that's what you want then speak up and say that but don't keep playing the victim and trying to garner sympathy or empathy from people when you're making a conscious choice to walk into this you know what it is it is what it is if you want to be with a pimp be with a pimp can't knock the hustle so anyhow in addition to Stevie J and Estelita, we also see Kirk make an attempt to get back into Rashida's house. Now, speaking of stupidity, I, 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 I've compiled a list and that I'll have to look that up for you one, guys. Of like the stupidest women on reality television. Rashida, Mimi, Amina Butter, Butterfly, um, Tara, um, there's a couple of them that are at the top of my list for just being just complete idiots in the way that they allow this, these men to treat them. And at this point, I don't even blame the men because I, I hate saying that the way that they, yeah, because I, I should, the way that they allow these men to treat them because these men are only treating them the way they're allowing themselves to be treated. You know, how many times does a man have to dog you out before you get it? How many times? How many times? For me, it takes one, maybe one and a half if I'm feeling generous. But once you get to that one, 1 1.5 mark, I'm done. I'm done because at, at that point, he's no longer abusing me. It's me abusing me. It's me making a choice to go back into something that I know is dysfunctional and unhealthy. And when I saw Kirk pull up to Rashida's house with all of his stuff and he's sort of forcing you know, his way back into the house. To me, that is a direct indication that you still have no respect for me. This is still a relationship that you want on your terms and condition. You have, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, if Rashida would have had a child by another man, it would have been a whole set of cir different circumstances. And for whatever reason, <clears throat> Rashida's saying, you know, well, I miss having my partner. Well, if he's having sex with other women and creating children outside of your marriage, did you really ever have a partner? You know what I mean? Was it a partner in name only? So 
I don't get it, but who am I to judge? <laughs> Even though I'm clearly judging, I just think that it's really, really, really stupid for she to, to let Kirk back in. And so Kirk gets all his boxes. He moves back in with Rashida. And, you know, she comes out to the front door and she's sort of, you know, playing like pl being coy and, you know, no, you can't come. You know, like you can completely see through it. Anyone knew, you know, Ray Charles knew. He could, Ray Charles could see that Kirk was on his way back into that house. And Kirk is another one for whatever reason. Like he's a dirty dog, but for some reason there's just something so sexy about Kirk. I don't know if it's just dark skinned men. Um, but I just find Kirk really attractive too. But not attractive enough to let me let him do the things that he's done to Rashida and allow him, especially on national TV, like maybe I would be a little bit more vulnerable a little bit more weak if the world wasn't watching but there's something about everyone being privy to what's happened to me and having to swallow that pill every time i see someone every time i get into an argument with someone i immediately know that that's going to be the goal to read you know that they're basically going to say that i'm dumb i'm stupid and while that shouldn't necessarily be a basis or foundation for how you live your life and make your decisions i don't know i think that my ego to some degree would not allow me to go back into that relationship. But at the end of the day, if Rashida likes it, I love it. I just think she looks crazy for doing it. And I'm trying to think if there's anything else that happened on here um, that was really worth mentioning. So we find out that Carly Red has slept with someone or been involved with someone else. Who hasn't Carly Red been involved with? So I don't even feel like rehashing that. Um, that was pretty much it that we saw during this episode. Um, but with that being said, you guys, I'm not going to take up too much of your time just dragging this on. Let me know what you thought of the most recent episode of Love and Hip Hop. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, in closing, people, remember to live better, love harder, and as always, think smarter. It is me, the Cerebral Diva. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you guys again soon.